Celebrate General Hospital's anniversary with a tribute to ABC's soap. To but, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel, General Hospital Update. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like up. Celebrate General Hospital's anniversary with a tribute that gets to the show's still beating heart. Plus, pour over a massive photo album that goes all the way back to day one. No, it's not an April Fool's Day joke. Today really is General Hospital's 61st anniversary. The show was released into the world back on April 1, 1963, the exact same day as NBC's similarly themed The Doctors and its utterly forgettable Ben Jarrett. General Hospital's Vitals Who's who in the cast of characters? P-H-O-T-O-S Poor Ben Jarrett lasted less than three months. The Doctors made it 19 years. General Hospital, on the other hand, is still here all these years later, keeping us glued to our TV sets as we watch the folks of poor Charles make beautiful messes of their lives. Of course, in those earliest days, no one was watching the residents of Port Charles because General Hospital City didn't have a name, nor was there a Corinthos family. There weren't even any Quartermains, Spencers, or Webbers. There were, though, the Hardys and the Brewers. Jesse Brewer delivered the show's first lines along with the ever-important virtuous heroing factor. When General Hospital began, she was married to a younger man, Dr. Phil Brewer. He was a handsome doctor who had a problem keeping his stethoscope in his pants. Phil also had a problem with consent. When Phil eventually turned up murdered, no one was very surprised or very upset. Jesse's good friend, Dr. Steve Hardy, meanwhile, cut a more heroic figure. He was engaged when the show began, but his problem was leaving his stethoscope at the hospital. His actual stethoscope, we should specify. His fiancé grew tired of competing with his work for his attention and walked out. Even the eventual love of his life, Audrey, had a hard time getting him to focus on anything besides his beloved hospital. The drama spread out from them, but it never wandered too far from the hospital and its staff a family whose lives revolved around corporate intrigue. Perish the thought, a clan of mobsters and coffee importers. Heaven forbid. No, no, all drama flowed from General Hospital in. Well, that wasn't important. The town was somewhere east-ish. It was called General Hospital for a reason. Heck, it wasn't until 13 years later in 1976 that the town finally got its name, Port Charles. That name was really the beginning of the soap as we know it. In that same year, we met the Webbers, brothers Rick and Jeff, and Monica, though she wouldn't be played by Leslie Charlson until the following year. 77 was a big year for recasts, with Jeannie Francis coming in and taking the world by storm as she took Laura from childish plot device to headstrong teen. Still, none of these changes were quite enough to save the flagging show with its glacially paced stories about malpractice. Thrilling. The ABC bigwigs knew they needed a pretty strong jolt if they were going to bring General Hospital back to life, so they hired Gloria Monti as its new executive producer. They then told her she had a lucky 13 weeks to turn the show around before they were calling its time of death. Gulp! Monti brought in Douglas Marlin to serve as head writer, and together they sped the storylines up and refocused on the younger cast. Read our tribute to him here. Laura took center stage, playing teen angst with Scotty Baldwin, making a squirm as she was seduced by her mother's friend and blowing up daytime following her explosive pairing with Luke Spencer. The showrunners then asked if viewers would like to get to know the Spencers and the Quartermains and got a resounding yes in return. And once the show discovered a world outside of the hospital, it seemed there was no place it couldn't go. Globe-trotting adventures, world domination, mobsters, super spies, super villains, super couples, General Hospital didn't just set the soap world on fire, it set the entire world on fire. Over the years, ABC's sole surviving soap has been put on life support a time or two, but that's the way pretty much all shows go, and whenever General Hospital starts to fade, the resulting infusion of fresh blood brings it back better than ever. That's certainly what happened in the early 90s when Wendy Rich took over as executive producer. She gave us heart-wrenching topical stories like the HIV-slash-AIDS crisis, a new tradition in the nurse's ball, and morally ambiguous action courtesy of everyone's favorite mobster, Saudi Corinthos. 
Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel.